Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and today we're back with even more of the Dreadnoughts from 1985, today with Ripper and Torch. How many of these guys are there, Gorilla? After today, we have seven left. Oh. Oh, and there's vehicles too. Oh, come on. When are we getting back to wrestling, Gorilla? You know what? Call me when we do. Whatever, get the fuck out of here then. I'm going. Then go! Goodbye. Bad bye. Fuck. Whatever. Raz Holly, hit the music! It, it's almost like he's like a noodle. It's still 1985, and we're completing the core of the Dreadnoughts today with Ripper and Torch. These two, along with Buzzer, really exemplify what the Dreadnoughts are supposed to be. A cross between outlaw bikers and the post-apocalyptic world of the Road Warrior. As the line continues, they push this idea a bit further. Eh... Of course, all good things come to an end. Oh, what have I done with my life? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with the file card for Torch. File name, Tom Winkin. Wait just a fucking minute here. What is Ripper's name? Harry Nod. So Buzzer, Torch, and Ripper are Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. What in the actual fuck? You geeks always talk about how brilliantly these file cards and backstories were written. Ah, but you see, the file cards, they are brilliant in the beginning, but it wasn't until the later years that they really sucked. Suck my geek off, fanboy! These file cards are from 1985, and we had ventriloquist Zartan in 1984! These file cards are bullshit! And I think you all know it! Ah, but the names are taken from the Eugene Field poem. It's so clever. Winkin' and blinkin' and nod. One night sailed off in a wooden shoe, man. Into a sea of dew, man. Where are you going, daddy-o? And what do you wish, man? We come to fish for the herring fish, man. Far out, man. Far out. Okay, let's get this over with. Harry Nod is from Grim Cape, Tasmania, and he's such a bad dude that, get this, he was expelled from nursery school for extorting candy from his classmates. Oh my god, how much worse are these going to get? Okay, let's move on to his specialties. Edge weapons and cutting tools, Natch. It also goes on to say that he's known throughout the swamps for using his blade like a cross between a fireman's axe and a can opener to unlock gates and crack safes. Whatever. Let's take a look at what we came for, the action figure. Okay, from 1985, here is Ripper. As you can see, he's in fairly good condition. He's got the basic articulation for figures from 1985. Swivel arm, the grip, all that good stuff. He's an O-ring figure, um, and this one is in pretty good condition. Like I said before, he's got some kick-ass blue jeans. He's got a, uh, a pistol in his holster right there. He's got this uh, green uh, vest on that is uh, reminiscent of a certain uh, whispering guy who I won't mention. I'm watching Anyway, he's, uh, he's also got this gold band around his arm <laughs> and these cool red shades and his awesome mohawk. Um, he's super cool looking, 
And uh, yeah, he kind of fits that, that biker aesthetic to a T. He's also got these cool, this cool little knife right here and this fun uh, necklace on his chest as well. I really like how they fit the, the whole biker aesthetic into G.I. Joe with this. It's really cool. He's also got some accessories. He has this ripper, which it looks like the Jaws of Life. So um, this is based on the actual Jaws of Life, I guess. I think it is. Um, it, you know, it's used to rip open cars and stuff for when you know people are in car accidents and they are stuck in the wreckage. They can use a, a tool, not unlike this, to rip the metal apart. And it goes right here on his back and it looks pretty cool when he's all set up. And you can kind of get the pose like he had on the cover of the, uh, the figure there on the, on the box art. And yeah, he can hold it. And I always like that when figures can do the, the pose that they have on the box art. And this one can do it. But that's not all. He does also come with this. This here is a uh, rifle with a bayonet, a comedy bayonet. Look how long and uh, you know and round and weird this thing is. Um, but it does say in his file card that he uses it like a can opener to open up safes and, and crack locks. Um, he's got a, a, a scope on there and a clip, and it, you know for except for the. Uh, the bayonet there, this is a pretty basic looking rifle, but that, that blade on there looks like something out of the Klingon Empire. This figure was discontinued in 1987, and another figure wasn't made for him until 2002. I'm sticking to the vintage line in this series. Because he's too cheap to get them all! Hey, I thought you were leaving! I'm gone, but I gotta let all my Ventura files know that you're too much of a penny-pinching cheap son of a bitch to buy all the G.I. Joes. That's not necessarily the case. And nobody calls themselves Venturophiles. They do. And you're cheap. Anyway, let's get back to Torch. We covered that he's named after a poem. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Anyway, Torch is Australian. Cool. He was sent to reform school at 14. Gosh, I hope it wasn't for candy extortion. He escaped and joined the Merchant Marines where he learned how to use a cutting torch. It goes on to say he's illiterate. That's sad. And his spontaneous violent nature is only matched by his stupidity. A trait he shares with these brilliant file cards. He works with an oxy-acetylene torch, remodeling stolen cars and occasionally cracking safes. It also says he scavenges the swamps for fun and profit. Not sure what exactly he's scavenging for from the swamps. Old logs? Alligator turds? Anyway, double fuck this file card. Let's take a look at Torch live in plastic. Okay, here is Torch from 1985. He is really cool looking as well. He's got the awesome blue jeans. He's got a pistol here, a knife there. He's got these really badass uh, biker boots on as well. Um, cool belt around there and the awesome... Not, um, instead of a cod piece, he's got this cool belt buckle and belt going around. Also has a little pack there and another pack on the side to keep, I don't know, chewing tobacco. Something like that. It isn't books because we know he's illiterate. Um, and then he's got this skull on a uh, on a chain around his neck, and this uh, very heterosexual-looking vest um, that he and collar combination, along with his Bruce Springsteen headband and Terminator shades. <laughs> but man, I still love the Dreadnoughts. These guys are really great. He also comes with accessories. He's got this torch. Take a look, it's pretty cool. And um, I actually broke this piece off, sorry. 
Um, <laughs> that was my bad. <laughs> but it connects to this gas can on this uh, flimsy plastic thing that pops out all the time. And uh, But he can hold it. And it, just like anything else, he has a back hole. You can stick it right into the back and then you can connect and you can connect the torch and it's pretty cool and he can uh, burn stuff and uh, all in all he's a great figure as well and that's that's about it for torch this torch figure was discontinued in 1987 it would be almost 20 years before another would be released and because i think the figures released after 1994 are kind of crap and you're cheap I didn't get any of the others. Okay, so that's it for this week. Wait a minute. Jess, what are you still doing here? No reason. I just want to make sure you don't screw anything up, Gorilla. Well, Jess, you'll be glad you stayed because next time we're taking a little break from the Dreadnoughts and we're looking at a big pile of WWE crap. Oh, yeah? Well, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Well, don't forget to check out our Facebook page for the Dan Classic Show. And let me know in the comments. Let you know what? I don't know. Just tell us what you think. What you'd like to see. Or, I don't know. Tell me how fat I look on YouTube. Yeah, because everybody knows the camera adds 150 pounds. Will you be serious? Anyway, for Jess... The fanboy, I'm Dan Classic, saying we'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show. Raz Holly, hit the music! Shut up, dude.